Welcome to Media Kit. My favorite third-person games all have complex combat mechanics with a variety of weapons, stealth options, and melee combat. Actually, the melee combat is usually weak and sometimes non-existent. Talk. Metal Gear Solid 5. No melee combat, just a takedown. Watch Dogs 2. No melee combat, just a takedown. Batman looks really cool, but the player is only picking the target, kinda, and mashing the one attack button repeatedly. Skyrim has swing, heavy swing, and block. Horizon Zero Dawn has swing, strong swing, and a critical, executable from cover, on downed enemies, or from above, plus some invaluable evasion options. For the most part, these complex combat games become really simple when it comes to the melee combat. A Reddit user asked, what game has the best melee combat system, excluding melee combat oriented games, so no Smash, Street Fighter, or Mortal Kombat, etc.? Various titles were thrown around, but a few people mentioned a fondness for a game I loved from the early 2000s, Oni. In 2001, Bungie released two games before becoming exclusive to Microsoft's Xbox. A little title called Halo and Oni. Now I'm not going to rehearse the game's story, characters, level design, or graphics. The legacy Oni left is its combat, and it's possible no game has yet matched Oni's potential in this area. Certainly not the games I mentioned a minute ago, or any game I've ever played. Oni isn't an open world game, but it has large open levels, including multi-level buildings, an airport, and a chemical plant. It's a third-person shooter with a rare handicap. Kanoko can only carry one gun at a time. Guns include a pistol, an SMG, a taser, a plasma rifle, a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, the phase streamer, the screaming cannon, which was slow, but bad guys didn't run from it as it homed in on them and sucked their life force, and the mercury bow. My favorite. By design, the game doesn't provide enough ammo to go guns blazing through any of the levels. Players have to choose who to shoot and who to fight hand to hand. And this is where Kanoko shines. She moves with WASD, steering with the mouse. When her gun is holstered, left click is punch, right click is kick. Simple. Now, use WASD while clicking and Kanoko will do a unique attack in that direction. Same with kick. That's eight attack moves already. Do nothing to block an attack, which only works against light attacks, and I seldom found myself doing nothing in a fight, but whatever. Make her run in any four directions and punch or kick, and eight more attacks are revealed. Hitting crouch mid-jump made her flip in the air, and was a great way to knock extra points off a floored opponent. She flips in all four directions. Hit Crouch with WASD and Kanoka will do an evasive roll in that direction. Whoa. Kicking while crouching was a sweep. Sweep the leg. Crouching plus a forward kick is a crouching high kick. Crouch while running turns into a slide that doubles as an attack. It can also be used to gather drops without stopping. But that's just getting started. She also has combos and gains more at every level. Three consecutive punches perform the triple haymaker. Three consecutive kicks perform the spinning side kick. The crescent moon kick is two kicks and a forward kick. Step back followed by a forward kick earns you the widow kick. Forward punch while up in her opponent's grill becomes a shoulder throw. The Reverse Pile Driver, by doing a forward punch from behind. One of the most consistently devastating moves is the Backbreaker. A forward kick from behind. A forward kick from in front will complete a reverse kick throw, tossing the attacker behind. The move will also damage any opponents in the path of the thrown body. Approach a target running and kick, and Kanoko enacts a throw that would make Black Widow jealous. Disarm is a forward hit when standing in front of someone. Kanoko can then immediately use the gun on her attacker. If she already has a gun, she'll drop the new one. 
In the last level, Kanoka learns Step Disarm. That's a forward kick while standing in front of her opponent. That's the same combo as one of the throws, and as a result, that's what I did most of the time trying to do this move. Sledgehammer Heel. Two punches and a kick. This one always knocks her opponent down. Running Lariat. Run into the enemy and press punch. One of the easiest to pull off and always satisfying. Her feet would also kick nearby attackers as she orbited. Twister Kick is supposed to be an evade and attack, combined into one. Step left or right, then forward kick. It's hard to execute and often missed its target. Devil Spin Kick is also hard to execute. It starts with a crouch and then a kick as the crouch button is released. It comes with its own goofy battle cry, but is one of the few moves that can take out multiple targets. Rising Fury is performed the same way, but pressing punch after releasing crouch. It also had its own battle cry. What I find so innovative about these combos is the keys are simple as they relate to the action. Crouch, release, kick. Run and punch. Kick, kick, forward kick. Right, forward kick. Forward kick from behind. Hey! For all its innovation, Oni had issues too, beyond the data graphics. There was no new game plus, so combos learned in later levels could never be used in earlier levels. The default keys were pretty good, nevertheless there was no option to remap them. Cutscenes couldn't be skipped, and some of them were painfully long. I often got hung up on geometry, like doorways and corners, frustrating in brawls. Some of the levels were really hard, making me battle three or four advanced opponents while providing sparse health power-ups. Worst of all, some of the combos required precise timing to trigger and were difficult to pull off, leaving me open to attacks when they didn't execute. All in all, Kanoko had around 50 combat moves and dodges she could perform, and the player had full control of each one. In addition to her weapons, Kanoko didn't fight if the player didn't key her to act. And she didn't get good. I had to get good. Button mashing was fruitless. Kanoko doesn't look as cool as Batman, but she was a lot more interactive. I wish more games would provide even a tenth of the brawling ability Kanoko had. Bonus fact. The game's name has confused a lot of people. An Oni is a Japanese demon of folklore. The name fits because the game was inspired by the cyberpunk world of Ghost in the Shell, a Japanese manga and anime. The name was suggested by the girlfriend of an early project leader and became the game's codename during development. Eventually, no other name was embraced and Oni stuck as the game's official name. If you're interested in this game, you can get it at various abandonware sites. Searching Oni Bungie Game Download will get you where you want to go. Happy backbreaking! Hey! Thanks for watching.